presentation, any slides for this session, and that was actually made on purpose. Uh, let me just introduce myself and then we will jump in back to our topics. So, as I was saying, my name is Anton Boyka, and probably some of you may already know me because I do participate a lot as a speaker in different conferences and events. My main area is Microsoft Azure and everything which is cloud related. And for today, I would like to share my experience with you how we actually were able to utilize the AI services in Azure, the cognitive services, or actually some of those, to create uh, prototypes and pilot those prototypes really fast. And today we will talk more about image recognition. So, uh, in case in case you know how to work with the libraries ten, like TensorFlow or something similar, that session may look kind of a strange to you, but the biggest advantage, at least to me, for all the cloud services, especially in Azure, is that you can start using them right away. You don't need to be an expert in an area. You don't need to be uh, like a data scientist and stuff like that. There is kind of a simple API which you can use and you can build your app really fast. And I will go uh, more in details and show actually what it means. So if you have, let's say, no knowledge in data science and you want to uh, work with uh, the set of AI and ML services in Azure, you just go to azure.com website, you go to the product, choose AI and machine learning, and go to cognitive services. So what you can see here, if you will scroll down a bit, Today we will talk about cognitive services, which are within section called Vision API. And the first service I would like to show you really, really fast called Computer Vision. So the idea of Computer Vision service, you can read the documentation here, but also what is important is that you can try to play with the service right from the portal. So the computer vision is basically the set of the APIs which you can use to, let's say, upload a photo there and ask the machine to describe what it actually see on that photo. So as you can see, there are a few examples here. And as you can see that the machine were able to recognize some objects. So we do have a coordinates here and we have the description like the subway train, uh, like the land vehicle and stuff like that. And also the confidence level, for example. Uh, it said that through the vehicle and it confidence is pretty high, like almost 93%. And there are also other images here as well. What you can do also, you can take your own picture, for example, like this here. So let me just copy the image address from the Google, basically. And you can put it here or you can upload a file from your local machine and right away you submit it to the cloud and what we can see here so we can see that it was able to recognize the object and that is a boat which is actually yeah this one is a boat and also it was able to add some text to that picture like the sky the outdoor the watercraft the ship the water boat and stuff like that also uh, we do have some description generated by the engine itself, like the water boat, beach people, and stuff like that. So that is actually really cool. Also, what it can check for you, it can check, for example, like, is it an adult content or not? In this case, that is false. And is it a racy content or not? It's also false. So I do like this service because of the simplicity. And, you know, uh, I had an idea what can be my next app that I will build with this service. That idea actually came to me recently, basically like a few days ago when I presented the same service to another group of people. So if you are into the board games, you may know that there is a funny board game called Dixit, when you need basically to describe 
what you see on a card, but you need to describe it in a way that some of the group will recognize the description, some will not. So that will be really fun actually trying to combine this service uh, with the Dixit game and create maybe a bot or an API which will help me to play Dixit next time I will play it with my friends. So that was uh, the first example, but let's go for something a bit more uh, fancy and a bit more complicated. What I also have here on my Azure portal, uh, I do have another service which called custom vision. So what is the difference between computer vision and custom vision? For the computer vision, I basically use the standard general module uh, and all the descriptions and all the regs they came from the general domain. For the custom vision, for the custom vision, I can upload my images and uh, I can train the module with my own custom text. So I already have an instance of that service. Uh, you can create it really easily. And I will go to the custom vision portal and show to you how it actually works on the portal. You can also navigate directly to that portal by typing custom vision AI, but still you need to log in with an account that you use to log in to your Azure subscription. So I already have, let's say a few stuff here, but let's try to build a new one from the scratch. Let's try to create a model right away, all of us on this call, and uh, basically see how it will perform. So I will create a new project and car or bike demo. Oh, sorry. So this is an example I would like to use, car or bike demo. So what I would like to build here, I would like to build a simple model and uh, kind of train this model so it will be able to recognize next time I will send the picture to it, like is it a car or is it a bike on that specific picture. Uh, I can also provide some description. I can attach it to this one. Uh, basically a uh, custom uh, vision service in Azure. Uh, I can create the projects of two types. It can be either classification or object detection. So let me just add a few more details here. There are different tasks in terms of image recognition. When we talk about classification, classification is kind of relatively more simpler task because classification means that we may have a different classes. Like in our case, it can be a class of images that will be qualified as bikes and a class of images that will qualify as cars. So each and every time we will upload a new picture, we will ask our model to classify it as one class or second class. And also you may add as many custom classes as you want, but just in this example, I will use only two. If we will go with the object detection, object detection will actually provide us with a way to upload photos and then mark a part of this photo, like a region of this photo, and set that on this photo, this specific part is this object. And you can, basically the object is the same as the text. So you can create your own set of objects. You don't need to stick to any specific domain area if you don't want to. So the object detection means that uh, we will need to train our module to find which exact object it can see on this picture. So let me just give you uh, like a quick example. Uh, for example, if we have a photo with, let's say, five bikes, in case of classification, we'll just ask, like, is it a bike or a car? And it will say it's a bike. And it will kind of, um, 
it will pay no attention to the actual quantity of those bikes on the photo. If we will go with the object detection and if we will submit this photo, then the model will be able to say, okay, I can see an object here on these coordinates and this object is actually should be marked with tag bike. And there is another object also these coordinates and also should be marked as a bike. So this is basically the difference between those two. We will go in a more de uh, details also later, but for now let's just use that definition of difference between those two projects. So, sorry, another one, classification. So uh, what we can say, we can say that uh, uh, we will use the multi-class, which will basically means single tag per image, or we can say that we will use multi-label, multiple tags or image. It depends on actually how we would like to work with that model afterwards. Do we want, for example, to attach only one tag to each image or it may be the case when one image uh, can be, let's say, a member of uh, a few different categories, a few different test, uh, tags. So let's use the multi-label for now, again, for our example. And what we can do here as well, we can choose the domain. It can be general, food, landmarks, retail, whatever. In my case, again, let's use general. So there are some models here which marked as compact. It means that this model actually uh, was deliberately reduced. And the idea of that was that they reduced to increase the performance. So uh, they may give not, let's say, so precise uh, precisions, but they will perform much faster and consume less resources. Okay, so let me just create a project here. Okay, so the project is created. What I need to do now, I need to add some images. So let me just add uh, some images here. I prepared, as you can see, a gallery of images. I downloaded it from the internet. So let me use a few of those. So let me use those images, open, and let me create my own custom tag. Let's say that the tag will be the awesome car because yeah, that's, that car is awesome. So yeah, five images were uploaded and we are done. What is also important here is that if we work with the classification, then for each and every tag, we should provide at least five different images. If we will provide less, we will be unable to train our model. Okay, and now let's add something for the bike. So what our bikes will be? Let me check. Let's use this one, this one, this one, this one. And I also need one more, this one. So that will be my awesome bike. Upload. Done. Okay, now what we need to do, now we need to train our model. So I will hit the train. Uh, we can go with a quick training or advanced training. Advanced training will cost you more because it will consume more resources, but we will go the quick training just in sake of the demo. Of course, advanced model will be able to kind of make a more, let's say, precise uh, predictions, but for this demo, the quick training should be more than enough. So as you can see, the training was really quick. So my model here is ready to go already and I can do the quick test here. Okay, let's go for the quick test and let's try to upload some files from my local machine and check, is it an awesome car or is it an awesome bike? So let's try to do something, I don't know, something like that, for example. So as you can see, yeah, I know that this is a Fiat Multipla, but as you can see for now, 
uh, the model is not really confident that this is an awesome car. It is only 30% confidence of that. And the reason for that, that's the first example uh, I, I want to talk about. The reason for that is if we will go for the images and if we will actually check, then all the cars, all the images that I provide, uh, it was like the yellow car, mostly from kind of photoed from one angle. So it also means that if you want your model to perform really good, you need to also supply it with the good variety of, um, of input data. As we all know, shit in, shit out, and that was actually happening right here. So this uh, training set was really bad, so that is why the result is not really accurate at all. So let's try to do something else. Let's try to use this photo. And as you can see, for this photo, the model is really almost 100% confident that this is the bike. Okay, what we can do now. Let's say we are done with our uh, test and let's say that we want to upgrade our model. So let's add a few more images here. So uh, what I have, let me add this guy and this guy, for example. And that will be the awesome car. Upload, done. And let's train the model again. So now it will be the second iteration of that model. And now we will be able actually to see the difference, how it actually affects, uh, how it affects the results. Okay, training is done. Let's go for the quick test again. And let's use something like, I don't know, this one. Yep. 94% accuracy, that is cool. Let's try to do something else. Let's try to do this guy. Yep, so that car is not awesome, but again, uh, almost 40% of the confidence. Let's try something else. Let's try, for example, this car. So as you can see, Again, a uh, good example here. So this is actually uh, the first photo of the car which was taken from the behind. But still the model is more or less confident that this is uh, the car. Let's try again a few more examples. So let's try this example. So in this example, we have both uh, car and bike, and as we can see again, because we trained our model on only uh, what like seven or eight car images right now, then the performance is not really good. But let me try, let me try this one. As you can see, all the bikes that we uh, put before, they were without person, without the background, but here the model is almost confident that this is the bike. Let's try to make it even harder. I do have one more picture somewhere here. Uh, what was that picture? Okay, probably that picture was removed. Okay, uh, let me try this one then. So the bike again. That is cool. And let, oh yeah, that was the picture I was looking for. So the model is not really confident here, uh, but still, as you can see, almost 16% of the confidence, but the bike itself is almost kind of unseen on this photo. And I do have one more, one more crazy stuff that we can do, this one. So as you can see, the model again is uh, has extremely low amount of confidence, so we can almost ignore this result. But the bike itself, as you can see, I can see only like a few parts of it. So in all those demos, in all those demos, it may seem like the service actually performs really bad, except it's not, because again, it all came to the 
to the statement that if you want your model to perform really good, you need to train it properly. So let me just add a few more uh, training images. Let's try to create a third iteration of our model. So what we will also do now, for example, mm -hmm. let me use this guy here and let me use, I don't know, this guy, for example, that will be my car. And let's add a few bikes as well. For example, this, this, and this. So on those photos, there are part of a car and also part of a bike. So we can say that those photos should be marked with two tags. And let's train the model again. Okay, so let's do some quick test and let's try again to do something like, okay, let's start with something simple. For example, with this image. So on this image, there is really, really good confidence that we can see the bike here. Okay, let's try something else. Um, let's try again this guy. So as you can see, because we retrained the model, uh, then the confidence is now much higher that we can see the bike here, which was actually our intention. Uh, let's try something like this. Yep, it said that this is an awesome car, uh, but unfortunately, all of us know that it's not the case, but that was kind of a pun intended for those of you who know actually what that car is about. As you can see, as soon as we provided more uh, pictures, it can say that even the Jeeps with this uh, fancy eyelashes, it's also an awesome car. And let's try one more photo now. Let's try this one again. So as if you remember the last time, it was 0 0.4 percent uh, confidence that we can see the bike here. Currently, it's 9.6. It's still not perfect, but it's going there. So yeah, this is actually how it works. But uh, of course you will also ask me that, yeah, that seems fun, but how we can integrate it basically within our apps. And there are of course a lot of different SDKs that you can use, but uh, what you need to do to integrate it actually within your app. First of all, you need to do publish. Uh, you can choose actually which exact uh, model you will publish and you need to choose the resource in Azure to which resource you will publish. So I will publish the iteration number three. I will also name the iteration number three to my Azure account. What I have now, now I have the prediction API. So I have a URL, basically the API endpoint I need to provide the prediction key, basically my security key header. I need to set the content type and then I have two options. I can either set the content type to application JSON and provide a body and within that body it will be the URL or I can set that that will be basically the stream and within the body I can put the image file itself. So you can do both, all of them will work the same. So what we will do right now, we will go uh, and we will use Google to do something like car images. Okay, so uh, we can see that uh, there are some images here. And now let's try to take 
let's try to do some some crazy stuff so let's try to take this image yep what i will do now i will open a postman i do believe actually that uh, at this point i need to stop sharing my browser and start sharing my postman so i will do that now Okay, I hope you can see my postman right now. And let's try to create this request here in Postman. So I will show you actually how simple it is to work with uh, basic to, to work with that stuff. So what I need, I need the API endpoint. I just copied from the Chrome browser. That will be the post request. The body will be the JSON data and the URL. And let me copy the URL of that of that machine. So that will be the address of that machine. And also to the headers, I need to put one more extra header, basically my security key. Let me do that right now. The prediction key. Okay, that's that's actually all. So easy. So now we can send it and check what will be our results. And here it comes our results. So with the confidence of almost 60%, it says that there is an awesome car. And with, as you can see, the really, really tiny confidence, which is much more less than, uh, than a zero, it said that it's actually an awesome bike. So let me try to find a new photo really fast. And then I will show it in Postman again, and then sh I will show it what it actually looks like uh, in the browser. So. There is a new photo here. Let me try it here. Send. Okay, that's still 52% confidence. Not good enough. Let me try one more. Okay, 99%. Uh, I will stop the sharing and switch for my browser again. So that was that was the car with the 99% of confidence that there is a car, no bike. Uh, and basically that was the photo that they tried to use and the result was around 50%. And this photo was the original first photo that I tried to use and the result was around like again 50 or 60 percent but what is my main point here so for now we stayed on this call for like 30 minutes or something like that and let's check what we were able to achieve so first of all we were able to check that there is a general API uh, that can do the computer vision stuff and tag our image uh, with different tags. And also in less than 30 minutes, we were able to build this model that can give us some predictions on is it, uh, is it a bike or is it a car? So that was actually my main purpose to show you how fast it can be done. And as you can see, the total training set was uh, like 20 pictures in total. So now let me try a bit more about actually my kind of production uh, experience with that. Unfortunately, I am unable to share uh, the 
data from the production because I'm under NDA, but I can talk about the experience itself. So what we uh, do with this stuff? With this stuff, uh, we were able to really, really quick assemble a model that will basically analyze uh, the photos from the drone. And the drone actually was flying over the power line. And our first goal uh, was to try to kind of do some predictive maintenance kind of a stuff. And the first idea was that we need to check those photos and, for example, make sure that the power line uh, for example, the power line is clear, so we don't have any uh, damages, we don't have any, let's say, trees that are about to fall, or like branches uh, from the trees that are about to fall on the power line and stuff like that. So we were able to assemble that model really fast. The next challenge we faced uh, basically was with the cloud itself, because all the stuff that I showed to you, they worked really awesome, except to work with that, you need to have a connection to the internet. When the drone is actually flying in the middle of the nowhere, it can be really costly to actually provide you with a decent internet connection, so it will be able to upload the photos and then get back the results. Luckily for us, the Microsoft actually uh, knows about that, and the Microsoft actually provides you with a different offerings. So what you can do? First of all, all this stuff that you uh, actually saw today as a part of computer vision, the custom vision and stuff like that, you can consume them from the cloud in case you have an internet connection. But the second option is that uh, there is a program that you can apply. Uh, if you apply on that program, you need to actually describe to the Microsoft the exact case, how you would like to use this uh, piece of cognitive services, uh, uh, custom vision or computer vision stuff, and they will actually pull this module from their internal, uh, kind of from their internal uh, system, and they will ship it back to you as a Docker image. So you will be able to download this module on your machine, basically on your hardware as a Docker image. The only one uh, kind of detail that was mentioned is that still you need to have a connection to the internet, but now because the model actually runs on top of your hardware, you will not need to upload your photos to the cloud, you will just basically send to the Microsoft, you will send to them only the usage statistics. And the statistics, it will be used actually to, at the end of the month, create a bill for you. So they, they will use, let's say, the same billing model uh, if you run it on cloud or if you run it on top of your own hardware, you will still pay the same, but in our case, like with the drone, uh, that was extremely beneficial because now we can do all that checks uh, on the drone itself and we just say send the building statistic to the Microsoft. So we were able to reduce the amount of traffic and reduce the requirement for the quality of the internet connection from the drone. So that was also important thing that uh, that was worth uh, mentioning. Okay, at that point, I will probably take a short pause and do we have any questions related to these topics from someone on the call? No questions? or everyone is just muted. Yeah, the audience is muted, but you have to to remember that okay. most of us are shy. Yeah, that, that, yeah I mean, like that, that's fine with me that, uh, that you are shy or maybe you already know that stuff because uh, I'm actually, I was unable to check on each and every attendee that uh, they will either know or not know this topic, but nevertheless, yeah. Hold on, hold on, sorry, I have a yeah. question. Yeah. Uh, how many uh, photos 
uh, did you upload it to to um, to train this model for recognition of this uh, mm -hmm. power lines? Yeah. So uh, for the power lines, actually, yeah, that that, that, that that's a good question because uh, let me just show which that was on no that was on the performance screen probably or no. Uh, Okay, so that was somewhere here. I don't remember. Maybe they, yeah, they, they, they pulled it somewhere from the UI. So there is actually a limit of amount of photos that you can host within each and every model, within each and every uh, project. For our case, for our case, we use, uh, I do believe that was like the few hundreds of photos, something like that, like two, three hundred, something like that. And with that amount of photos, we were able to achieve, you know, our first results. Because uh, the idea itself was that we need to, as I said, check it really fast. It will either work or it may not work. And we, uh, the idea was that uh, we didn't want to spend, you know, like uh, six months just to create the proper module. Uh, and after six months, we will just realize that uh, flying the drone will be too costly. So it will be cheaper for us to, I don't know, let's say hire a person and that person will just go through the power lines and check with uh, his own eyes that there are no damages there. But uh, for now, the project is still in a kind of pilot stage, but we get, as I said, our first results and we were able to achieve that with about like two, three hundred photos to train the model. And this first prototype was uh, trained by uh, your photos, which was made in the field or you just collected from internet? No, uh, we basically, the, 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 that's a good question. So what we did, we actually uh, used the same drone use the same drone. So the drone actually was operated by the person in the field, but the photos were taken from the drone itself. And then uh, we were able to train the drone and the person actually uh, kind of decided that, okay, that those photos are okay, those are not, so we categorize them in different categories, but the original photos came from the drone itself because uh, I'm actually, uh, I didn't have, you know, like the 100% proof, but I still have a pretty good confidence that if we will take those photos from the ground and then drone will try to take those photos from the sky, photos will be different and the result will be in best case unpredictable. In worst case, the result may be, you know, like totally opposite. Mm -hmm. And what is the plan? So, uh regarding these drones so they will be like uh, um, automated so there is no need to operate oper like some people who operate mm -hmm. this drone just like sending there like 100 kilometers uh, during the line and getting this information or Yes, so uh, for now, the next step is that the drone still needs to be operated by the human being. But the idea is that how it currently works in a current scenario that uh, we need to do the regular maintenance of the power lines. And it works in a way that basically the, uh, the group of people, which consists of, if I remember correct, like three person or something like that. So the driver, the power engineer and someone else. I don't remember actually who that guy, but I do remember that there was a three guys. So the three guys, basically they get into the car and they are just kind of driving, uh, through, uh, the, driving just following the power line. And uh, they made those observation uh, kind of manually or let's say uh, with their own eyes. So basically, if you need to use those three guys, you need to pay the salary for three guys. You also need to pay for the fuel of the car and stuff like that. And also because uh, it may be tricky for them, you know, like to start in a proper place. So they also may need to spend some time to drive from the, let's say, the facility, basically from the garage to drive to the start of the power line or something like that. And our idea here was to kind of spend less amount of money to operate the power line. So we will use drone 
who will consume, uh, and it actually there is, the drone consumes less fuel than a car. So the drone consumes less fuel, but still we do have an operator who basically sits um, at the main building and the operator still operates uh, the drone. But the operator operates the drone in a more way that uh, in case we lose the telemetry from the drone, uh, then we need to have someone who will be able to, you know, kind of escalate and try to do something with that. So that is basically was the, the, the idea how we can make a business case uh, on that and how we can reduce the cost of, uh, let's say, operating and maintaining the power lines. Same great idea. <laughs> and probably you already have some potential clients. Uh, yeah, but uh, that was actually the internal project uh, within that power company. Mm, okay. So it's it's a, so so it's not like a startup. Uh, that was an internal project in uh, one of the companies actually that uh, kind of supplies the electricity to the citizens. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. No problem. Yep. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yes, I have one more question, please. Yep. Um, yeah. What kind of metrics uh, did you use to evaluate your model? And what was the best result you could achieve? Uh, that is uh, kind of an interesting question because I'm not sure actually what kind of um, quantifies as a metric here. Uh, because we basically, let, let, let me try to answer this question in a way uh, that I know how to answer it, and then we can kind of have maybe a more dedicated detailed discussion on that. So uh, we trained basically the model with a trainer. So that was the person who uploaded these photos, and that was the person who actually tagged each and every photo. Of course, we split the initial data set on two uh, different subsets, basically the uh, first set of photos was the training photos, and the second set of photos was the kind of, um, I forget uh, the term, but the second set of photos were used after that to check again manually uh, that uh, kind of is, is model performing well or not. But anyway, both the training and the kind of quality assurance, if we can name it like that, uh, was performed manually by by the person. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah, so at, at some point, I also know that uh, uh, there were other guys who tried to do uh, more or less uh, the same kind of stuff. They tried to do it with uh, the libraries like uh, TensorFlow. And for them, uh, they also succeeded to some degree. Uh, but in our case, again, as I said, uh, the biggest benefit of that service was that we were able to uh, basically use the same developers that works on that project, and on that, on that project, the same developers actually were able to create the module and attach it to the, uh, basically the, the software which operates the drone and also the UI is simple. So we were able to basically get access to this UI uh, to the person uh, who actually is a subject matter expert and who uh, was able to train the model. So the biggest benefit here is the, the velocity. So we were able to create the first prototype is in, in, in like one month. And then uh, after six months, uh, the drone was already flying over the power lines, taking photos, and the guys were, all, all the guys were sitting basically in the main building. One more question. What is the frequency of uh, taking photo? Uh, the frequency was, I do believe, like one photo per like five, six seconds, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is like a cost per 100 kilometers? Uh, or one I'm kilometers? Not... 
I'm not sure that I remember that exact number actually, because what I do remember is that, yeah, we calculated the cost of the fuel for the drone and we calculated the cost for the fuel for the car and the drone was more efficient, definitely. Uh, yeah, but, but I don't remember the exact numbers. But you also need to pay for uh, recognition request, yeah? Oh, you okay, you're asking about those? Okay, yeah. so... Uh, let me go here. So that that actually we can check. Uh, oh, yeah, we can check it here. So cognitive services. So that was the Vision API. So uh, here is the pricing model. So um, that's not the computer. Oh yeah, actually that's uh, that's the same. Okay, so I do believe that uh, that is this part. That is this part. So that will be dollar and a fifty uh, for the first uh, for each uh, thousand transaction uh, for the first million transactions, and then the price actually will go down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's things. Yeah. Okay, and one more question from my side. Mm -hmm. um, have you used only Azure Cognitive Services in your project or maybe try to use something else from Google Cloud, for instance? Uh, that's a good question, actually. I know that uh, on AI, let's say, area, each and every cloud provider works on that. Okay, if, not each and every, but if we consider the big three, like the AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud, everyone works on that. But because my uh, expertise area is more about Azure, so that is why we tried to build this with Azure, it works, so we didn't try the other competitors. So maybe, maybe they have, let's say, something that may actually perform even better. I don't know, honestly, and that was the case for us. Because at that team, we have no one uh, with an expertise in uh, Google Cloud or AWS. So we have expertise only in Azure. So that is why we try to do everything with Azure. Thank you. Yep. Of my, let's say, pet projects uh, on a GitHub, it's open source. I started recently. The idea is to build the smart lock, which will be able to recognize the owner and open or close the lock. And the idea is that because that API can be hosted, as I said, in Azure or on your own hardware. So the idea, the idea is that uh, the code itself and the system itself should be and it can be designed in a way that it can run, for example, from the microcomputer like Raspberry Pi. So that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of a, what you can check if you want to go like, uh, further and broader into this area using the Microsoft pre-existing pre-configured uh, services to work with AI. Okay, uh, I do believe that I have nothing more to add. So if we have any questions, I do believe that that will be the last chance, at least on this call, <laughs> when you can ask them. So yeah, but definitely not the last chance uh, ever because there is a big chance that you can see me on the next uh, conference, community meetup or whatever. So uh, guys, girls, uh, do we have any more questions on, on that topic? 